Greetings to you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, today we have a very special guest, uh, and he's he's going to be one of our frequent preachers uh, uh, in 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 this channel as well. Uh, his name is Greg Marthaler. He is one of our dearest friends, and he is he also is a co-leader in the ministries that we have held in our churches and outside. Uh, he is a very exciting person. Uh, he is also the CEO of an uh, SFY company in uh, in Colorado, US, and uh, to which uh, Atara Business Solution is closely working with. Uh, he's an exciting person. He's um, he's also a very loud person and uh, very energetic as well. He anybody who meets with him and talks with him will not go back the same way that they have come. He always has a tendency to. Um, pour into you and make you feel energized and uh, you often after hearing him would be definitely encouraged. Uh, I take this opportunity to welcome him to this channel officially and uh, we'll love to hear more from him and today he's, try he's going to start his leadership series with this channel the Rainbow Word Temple. Well hello well thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Greg Marthaler, all the way over here in the United States. Uh, I want to say thank you very much for Rainbow Word Temple for giving me this opportunity to speak and share. Uh, I'm really excited about it. Um, some things that I'm going to share about. Um, I'm going to talk about leadership. Uh, it's probably something I'm really passionate about, something I really like a lot. Um, I've learned a lot in my time frame uh, here in the state side. Uh, as a young kid, uh, I started up as cutting grass at the age of 12, working really hard uh, to make some extra money on the side. Um, I wanted to buy some other baseball cards when I was younger and um, <clears throat> and I needed to make money, so I cut grass. And that was the beginning stages of me learning about leadership and learning what it looks like. Um, from that time, kind of give you a little history about myself. I've owned and operated about nine different companies. Uh, in that time frame, I've had companies that have been very successful and I've had companies that have failed. Um, like one of my major first ones I started, um, I put quite a bit of money into the company, a cell phone company selling cell phones. And uh, this was back in 1999 era. Um, and uh, started the company up, uh, let's say in October, and invest quite a bit of money and by December uh, we were shut down so um, I learned real quick about failure and um, and what I did wrong it took me a while to understand those elements as I moved on um, I've had other companies and investments where I've invested with people and navigated stuff where things went good and things went bad um, you know, uh, my last two companies, so my last company I used to own was a roofing company. Owned that for about eight years, and I sold that company uh, to another uh, individual, uh, which was really exciting to go through. It was my first actual sale of a company. Uh, owned and operated that for about eight years. Uh, now I currently run and operate a current company now um, for about four years, and we just hit the Inc. 5000 list. Um, which is the top 394. So I like to think I have some idea, a little bit about some leadership and also um, I think uh, some pitfalls um, that I think some people are afraid to talk about in leadership. A lot of times in leadership, we talk about all the great successes, but no one really wants to talk about some of the difficult things about how some leaders have failed, some leaders um, that didn't do something right um, as you grow and develop. Um, and, and as I was thinking about how to what to say in, in a couple messages here, uh, these are a couple topics that I'm going to start hitting on. Uh, one topic is going to be on vision um, and why that's important. We're going to talk about passion and your drive and how that affects you as a leader in moving forward. Uh, another topic that a lot of people don't really put in leadership is love um, and how love is equated to in leadership. Um, and also in conjunction with love, also is also having some tough talks. Um, I think sometimes great leaders 
don't have the tough talks that they need to have. Um, like as a parent, uh, sometimes that you need to have difficult discussions with your children and what's going on and how you're going to navigate that and what that's going to look like and something that they may have done. It may not be an easy discussion, but it's a discussion that needs to take place. It could be um, you're watching your child go down a certain path and let's say studies. I know over in you guys, you guys have a lot of studies, but you know that's not necessarily probably something that he's passionate about or that he really likes to do, but he's just doing it because everyone else in the group is doing it. And you need, you know that he would be better suited in another field. Um, so that would be like a, an example of a tough talk. Um, you know, another topic that we're going to talk about is uh, it's beyond himself, um, which is beyond Jesus. Um, Jesus was always thinking beyond himself. He never was just thinking about him and what he was going to do, but he was thinking about how it was going to affect everyone else. Um, and then another topic we're going to talk about is confidence. And I'm certainly sure as I keep working on developing these, um, I'll probably have a couple other uh, discussion points. Um, one of my first ones I'm going to move into is vision. Uh, this is very, very important as a leader. Uh, it's probably one I think, probably one of the most important things as a leader that you need to have is vision. Um, you know, we all have heard the famous scripture, um, without vision, the people perish. Uh, that's a very famous line. And I really do believe that. I believe that as a leader, I believe that in organization, at, in a company scenario. And I also believe that in, in leadership as children's church, right? You know, I also do I talked a lot about some of the business stuff, but I also been a children's leader for about 15 years. I helped lead a youth uh, age group for about another 10, and I led also our young adults group for about another three years on top of that. So I have some other understanding about if you don't have the correct vision, um, some things take place. So I'm going to propose you guys a question here. Um, you know, we always say Jesus was a great leader. He was awesome. He was phenomenal, and he did really good. So... I'm going to say this, let's strip Jesus of all his miraculous signs and wonders that he did. Why was he still a great leader? Um, and, you know, there's there's some really deep questions there about why was Jesus a great leader when you strip him back down to 100% just a normal Joe Schmo, not moving in the gifts of the Spirit, not moving in signs and wonders. Jesus was still a great leader at that moment. Um and I think there's some things that we can glean from uh, God's word and Jesus himself in what this would look like. Um, and one of the things that I'm, I'm always admired by um, that I think sometimes when we read scripture, we ski through the scriptures really quickly. Um, and it's when Jesus accepted to follow or when Jesus asked Peter to follow him. And G Peter just asked him after he got done talking and Jesus uh, said, Peter, come follow me. I'll make you a fisher of men, right? And he just said, yes, right? And like we read that like, oh, that's no big deal, right? That's not a big deal. Well, let me ask you this. So let's take you and your current work field and your current position, whatever you're doing to make money, and someone were to come up to you and say, hey, you know, Joe, Simon, Peter, Paul, Luke, whoever it might be, whatever your name may be, come follow me. I'll make you a fisher of men you probably are going to look at them like they're crazy and you're not going to like, you're nuts. I'm not leaving. You have nothing to offer. And I have this job. I have to keep working and make money. Like, how is this all going to come together? Right? So these are some questions that I, when I read the scripture, I'm like, what was it about Jesus that was so great that allowed a man to leave his entire work field and his entire, everything he knew. Right. And, in in you know, we have to understand a little bit about Peter in that era, right? So fishing was a big, big thing, right? Having fishing boats, fishing, feeding people constantly, it was almost as important as farming, right? Because fishing, you could typically fish year-round in Galilee. It's difficult to farm year-round, so you can typically always gain fish all the time from the sea to feed your family or to sell or to navigate it. So it was a very, very... Uh, robust industry back in that time frame uh, because it was really easy to catch fish. You didn't need a lot. It was more manpower and just your time and dedication in, in the boat, in the nets, in fishing and learning how to navigate the, the sea and where the fish would be during different times and, and navigating that, right? So um, so Peter was in a very affluent uh, 
industry and, and market. So like today's society, so let's bring that to, to the world, right? So let's say you're in the tech world, right? And you're making some good money at the tech industry, right? So now this guy comes up to you, you're making good money in the tech field. Let's say you land a job with like Google, IBM, uh, you know, some of the like Apple, some of the big names, right? This, this is the kind of field that Peter was working in, high industry, high predominant field. And this guy comes up and says, follow me. You know, and this is why I look at Jesus, that the ability of vision that he had to be able to cast um, and share and catch someone's heart at that moment is is huge. Right. And, and as a leader, we need to understand how important it is to cast a vision that begins to transform someone's heart, that they're willing to leave something great that they currently have existing to follow something that's completely unknown, right? So Peter was accepting to do something that he really didn't have a full understanding, but he just knew that there was something great. Um, so let's just read the scripture uh, when this takes place, because I think it'll help bring uh, some context uh, for you guys. Uh, so we're going to go to Luke chapter five. It does a good job explaining uh, this scenario um, and what takes place. Um, I'm going to start at uh, verse number one. So Luke five. Verse 1, I'm going to read in the New International Version. Um, I typically like that one because it's easier for me to understand. Um, one day, as Jesus was standing by the Sea of Gersonia, the people were crowded around him and listening to the Word of God. He saw at the edge of the water two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one that belonged to Simon, and asked him to pull it out from shore, he sat down and taught people from the boat, right? So in this scenario, there's obviously a lot of people are surrounded by Jesus, right? And so Jesus saw a boat. He's using his head and thinking as a leader should, right? So Jesus saw a problem that this, this is a beginning element of some leadership that we're not even seeing here, right? So Jesus knows that there's a ton of people surrounding him. Not everyone can hear him in this current position. He sees some boats off to the side. He's going to ask this guy that he doesn't know, hey, look, can you push this off? You, everyone's kind of listening to me. Can you push it off from shore? And I can be able to speak to everyone. And everything good begins to start moving forward from there. All right. So when, uh, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out uh, in the deep and, uh, and let down your nets for a catch. All right. Simon answered, Master, we've worked all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let the nets down. All right. So obviously, um, during Jesus' speech, when he was teaching everyone, obviously there's something that took place in the message. Um, we don't necessarily have that message, but something took place that Simon's willing to at least, you know, like, look, I rode you out here out in the middle of the ocean or the, not the ocean, but uh, the sea, and you're willing to speak to the people. I gave you opportunity to do so, and I'll listen to you. I'll give you a shot. Let's see what happens and kind of goes from here. When they had done so, they had caught a large number of fish and the nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in, in their other boats to come help them. They came and filled their both boats um, so full that they began to sink. Um, now in this scenario, we need to understand what just took place here um, in, in this uh, particular situation, right? So not, not only Jesus is on the boat, right? Um, he has spoken to people, um, to, to the fishermen, they threw the nets on the other side. Obviously, they recognized they were tired. They're like, hey, look, for this guy, let's just throw him on the other side. It takes us five, ten minutes. What difference does it make? And then we go back in. It's probably what they're thinking in their mind, right? Almost like for you guys, someone coding or navigating some other stuff. Like, just let's just entertain this idea of this program or this app, and let's just see what happens, right? So they throw it off on the other side. Now it's so full, they can't even contain it, and their boats are about to sink, and they have to call in their other buddies to help them. And... At this point, this would be like a scenario like you guys create a computer app. The app ends up going viral. And now this app, you call all your friends and all your buddies to help you develop this app because you have no idea what to do with all this extra business that's going on and taking place in this particular situation. So let's say you're working for Google, you develop an app, and all of a sudden this app just rockets off the, the charts. Let's take like uh, Angry Birds, right? Let's say you develop Angry Birds, right, as an app. And all of a sudden this Angry Birds app just starts 
skyrocketing crazy, right? So we're trying to put this in context that you guys are understanding, right? Because most people don't understand fishing and the, the importance of what it was. But this is what it would be like back then, right? They just landed. They hit jackpot. They hit the lottery with all these fish, right? You know, you know how many fish it takes to fill up a boat and to get it to the point that it's going to sink, right? And back then, you know, they weren't catching. They weren't used to catching that type of volume of fish to fill their boats like this. Right, and that's which is why they're asking other their friends to help. Um, you know, so when Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, uh, Go away from me, Lord, I'm a sinful man. Uh, for he and his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James, John, and the sons of Jebe, uh, Simon's parents. Then Jesus said uh, to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. So they put up their boats on the shore and left everything to follow him. Right? So there's obviously a miracle that took place here um, for, um, for Peter to see what took place in that scenario. But as leaders, this is what vision does, right? So, so when we look at the miracle Peter wasn't just astonished by what took place. He was astonished by the vision that was taking place in, in being able to feed a, his family and navigating it and what was taking place there. That he knew if, if, if there was enough fish to fill the boat that no matter whatever we did, we would be okay because this leader has enough confidence to be able to bring in stability to me and what I'm doing and where I'm going. So as leaders, we need to find and look at people and assess what's going on in their life and begin to speak life into those things um, that, that are dead, right? So Peter um, obviously, you know, had studied the word of God um, and, and some people saying that he was actually studying to become a rabbi. Um, I don't know. I haven't had a chance to, to dive into that, but I've heard that from a couple different people. Um, and, and so he knew the letter of the law and he knew what he was doing in certain areas in his life was sinning. Um, but when Jesus came about, he breathed life into Peter, something that was dead. And the reason we know that there was life breathed is because there's a moment that Jesus, that Peter begins to realize that he's a sinful man, right? He begins to realize that he, he's a sinful man and he needs to repent and come clean. Um, and that was the purpose of what Jesus was doing to reveal unto Peter that there's life inside of him and there's something that needs to take place. So as leaders, we need to be able to get to a place that we can speak life into an individual. And that life is so alive inside of them that it begins to awaken. Um, you know, we, we look at light and darkness, right? And, and when you begin to live in darkness, you're so dark that when you speak life to someone, they begin to come out of the light. And what begins to happen is they begin to recognize all the junk in their life, right? So a lot of times we think it's our responsibility to begin to pull things off of people and remove those things. Our responsibility is to speak life into an individual that there's enough life that they begin to bring themselves out into the light and they begin to recognize that their own struggles in their own life because they all begin to know it, right? We, we're, we're, we're intelligent people. We know the things that we should be doing and we shouldn't be doing. I shouldn't talk to my mom this way. I shouldn't talk to my parents this way. I shouldn't be disrespectful to my employers. I shouldn't navigate this, right? So these are all great things in, in that we just, we just know in a natural world, right? And so when you bring the word of God in and you begin to navigate it and that individual begins to have life that's spoken into him, he begins to move into the light, begin to see his own darkness and his own sin that he needs to uh, atone and fix in his own life, which comes to his, we have all our own relationship with Christ and we're navigated to deal with different situations at that time, right? Someone may be dealing with cussing. Someone may be dealing with uh, pornography. Someone may be dealing with um, issues with uh, their kids and not, uh, not speaking to their kids correctly. Some may not be speaking to their wife correctly, right? Whatever it is, Jesus is going to navigate that through the Holy Spirit and begin to deal with those things at the at that moment but as a leader our goal 
is to speak life into an individual that they begin to become repentant, right? And this is what vision does, right? So vision, without vision, the people will perish, right? So with vision, people do great success and they begin to see things move forward. And because of this moment and because what took place that, that Peter began to see life inside of himself, he and his, and his family is willing to lay everything down and begin to follow Christ. You know, the, we always think of the miracle being something really great. And Peter is following Jesus because of the miracle. The miracle was the seed that took place that began to bring life back to Peter and let him know that, that A, there's a real Christ, there's a real God. Um, and navigating it. He's right in front of me, and I need to move forward. And he, and all the things that he was speaking on the boat that we don't know about the message, but we obviously know the teachings of Jesus, so we obviously know some I, I, ideas of what he was preaching on. Um, and, he, and, and, and Peter began to see and captivate those things. So as leaders, this is my thing to you, is that you guys need to have vision, and you need to learn to see vision, and you need to learn to identify in an individual the vision that they need to hear and that you need to speak into someone so that individual is is has the ability to to grasp the understanding of being able to coming out of the darkness and into the light right that is that is our call right we're called to win people to Christ and our calling is is, is to win them and bring them out from darkness and into light right and part of that is speaking life and vision in people and so this is one element of leadership that that I think is very crucial and I think Jesus did this in multiple times and I'm just using this one particular example um, here and there's many many others in scriptures that that Jesus does this um, so I just want to thank you and really appreciate uh, the time that I had here and uh, thank you much uh, Rainbow uh, Word Temple really appreciate the opportunity thank you